What is up, people? Welcome back to the final new lesson of AP Macro about international capital flows, so let's do it. And one last time, go ahead and smash that like button. Okay, so we kind of previewed the concepts in this video unbeknownst to you in the previous video. This lesson is all about how changes in real interest rates affect what people want to do with their money and the results of this. Let's assume that we're in an open economy in which capital flows are permitted. This just means that people can save their money and buy financial assets in both their home country as well as in foreign countries. If two countries allow international capital flows, the principle is very simple. Money will flow to the country with a higher real interest rate because it offers savers a better rate of return. We're gonna use the loanable funds model to illustrate this. Let's say Canada and the United States, and let's say that Canada has a real interest rate of 6% and that it's only 2% in the US. In that case, capital will flow from the US to Canada because American savers will be attracted to the higher rate of return their money can earn in Canada, and so they'll choose to save some of their money in Canadian institutions and to buy Canadian bonds. I mean, think about it. Wouldn't you rather earn 6% than 2%? Of course. Okay, so on our model, we're gonna see a rightward shift in the supply of loanable funds in Canada as a result of the capital inflows. And we'll see a leftward shift of the supply of loanable funds in the US since they're experiencing capital outflows. This might sound familiar because this actually isn't new either. We learned about this when we first did our loanable funds model. Okay, but one more thing to note is what happens to interest rates. Well, if Canada has a higher real interest rate than the US, capital will continue to flow from the US to Canada as long as Canada's real interest rate remains higher. It's only when the two interest rates have equalized that capital will stop flowing from the US to Canada. So in this example, as capital flows into Canada, it drives their real interest rate down at the same time that capital outflows in the US drive their real interest rate up. We'd expect the interest rates to converge somewhere in the middle, perhaps at 4%. For those of you who might be skeptical that it'll work this well, consider what would happen if too much capital flowed from the US to Canada. Well, at some point, this would cause the Canadian real interest rate to fall below the US real interest rate. And this would change the incentives for savers, wouldn't it? Now people would want their money in the US, and it would send money flowing in the opposite direction. It's only when the two interest rates are balanced that nobody has an incentive to save their money in the other country. In harmony with this, we can also make a general statement that capital tends to flow from slowly growing economies to rapidly growing economies because the faster growing economy typically has a higher demand for capital and therefore offers savers a higher rate of return for their money. By the way, you might remember from the previous video that changes in real interest rates are one of the things that affect the foreign exchange market. This is because if savers want to buy financial assets like bonds in a foreign country, they first need to convert their currency to that country's currency. So if real interest rates rise in Japan, we would expect American savers to want to buy Japanese financial assets. And to do so, the demand for the yen increases as well as the supply of the dollar. Really, the big thing here is just to remind you that we can see capital inflows on both the foreign exchange and the loanable funds model. So just make sure you always read the question carefully so you don't get a question wrong for doing something silly. Okay, well that's really it for this one. I just wanna thank you so much for sticking with me through this whole series. I really hope that it helped and that you found it beneficial. Be sure to check out the review videos as you prepare for your AP exam, and thanks again. Until next time, this has been a La Money Production. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to check out the description to get links to the answers to these practice questions, as well as some of the great study aids I've made for you. And I will see you in the review videos.